All right, everyone, and welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you're new here. I'm Christina, and today we're finally going to get caught up, essentially. Uh, so we are really behind, but that's okay, with good reason. We had finals, we had family around, and just everything was crazy with the holidays, to say the least. But we are back with NXT UK reactions. We're only going to do two from this month, uh, just because we took a break from reactions altogether right in the middle of the month, and then, of course, the holidays and etc, etc. So this go-around, we're going to be watching the December 2nd edition of NXT UK, and then the last NXT UK reaction for the year will be the December 9th edition. So get excited for that. So without further ado, we've got Ilya Dragunov and Mako Satomura. They're defending their titles in this episode, so let's get to it, shall we? I think so. All right, we're getting right into it. Love that. See, this is why I like this show. We don't really spend much time on the intro. We're how many minutes into this? About a little over two minutes, you know, which is normal, which is fine. You know, you got to introduce the show and you got to get your intro in. Not to mention, we're getting two title matches on the show. I love that. Okay, I think Mako got brand new graphics again, unless if I'm just seeing things. Normally, we would be using a different microphone, but I think that one uh, kind of took a smoke break and just hasn't been working right as we kind of have figured out uh, the War Games reaction. So just giving you all a heads up there. <laughs> Everybody's taller than me on these shows! <laughs> oh, she took her down real quick right there. Honestly, I know that they say this is a bit of a cliche every single time, but I think this might be Zaya Brookside's biggest match because I don't think she's had a title match, or at least not that I can recall anyway. What was that? I don't know what just happened, but it was kind of cool. Nice counter, nice counter. Stay on her. Stay on her, Zaya. Oh, nice forum from Mako. Okay, I'm just hearing this really weird noise, and I can't tell if it's from another apartment or if it's from outside, but it's like a really weird, almost like UFO noise, where it's like boop, 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 boop. I'm like, my laundry's done. It can't be that. I'm not running the dishwasher. What's going on? <laughs> Whoa, okay. She just got the rope, like, right there with, like, her toes. Like, it was bare. She barely got to the ropes right there. Also, we're more than likely going to be speedrunning this simply because we want to just focus on the matches just to get caught up with everything. So we'll still watch the segments. We just won't, like, react to them. Ooh, nice shift in the offense right there. Desperation and frustration is building for Zaya Brookside right there. I mean, she could have made a case right there, but, you know, it was only it was uh, only a two count. So close, yet so far away. That that definitely changes the tone of the rest of the match. I, I would not want to get into a kicking match with Mako Saddlemore. I'd be like, no, I'm out of here, bye. Oh, no. Oh, yep, that's it. Bye, Zaya. Nice, nice efforts here in this match. You know what? This was a good opening matchup. I, it was competitive. It was just the right length. And it did what it needed to accomplish. I thought it was a good opener. Great job to both Mako and Zaya on this wonderful opening matchup. I'm excited to see what happens the rest of the show. I swear, this dude, he got new trons, but I think he needs some new music because, I mean, it's... The just fast-paced music, it just screams like, you know, total good guy to me. At least that's how I got the vibe off of this dude anyway, so. Why are we just stalling to start this match? I'm a little confused here. Hey, wait, shouldn't have that been a disqualification since the jacket's a foreign object? Great job. <laughs> At least that's how I see it, because a jacket is an object that you wear. Oh, what an elbow. Oh, God, right to the back. I thought for a split second Huxley was just going to be going flying outside the ring. I guess we're conditioned to think that way at this point. Thank you for keeping us grounded. We appreciate it. <laughs> Quite literally, as Kenny Williams just like went to the mat. Why, why are we going underneath the ring? Or why are we looking underneath the ring, I should say. All right, now we're back inside the ring here. All right, we're going in for the cover, going in for the cover. Okay, that was smart, though. He was kind of like pinning down his shoulder with like the elbow or something to try to keep him down. Smart strategy there. Oh, ouch. Okay, my stomach just felt that. He's just kind of like dragging him around the ring. If this was like a four corners match, I think this dude would have had it won already. Oh, okay, well, I guess we're getting subculture out here. Or it's just, like, their entrance stuff that's, like, popping up. I'm assuming it's the uh, latter option. Okay, not quite the ending that I expected, but okay. So I know that I mentioned that we weren't going to be covering any sort of segments, really, but we got a whiteboard sighting on NXT UK! <laughs> okay, but at least this is mildly entertaining because it's like, oh, next number one contender. 
Let's plan this out. Oh man, there's like papers and everything everywhere. It's like he's really like strategizing here. Good use of the whiteboard. This might be one of the better things. This might be one of the better uses we've seen so far. Oh, okay. So it's kind of like a betting board almost where it's like, okay, what are the odds of like everybody becoming the next number one contender? Okay, well, this makes sense. Okay, so... Honestly, this one's probably the best whiteboard use that we've seen so far across these programs. So, Shaw Samuels gets a 10 out of 10. I know it's kind of barely legible. I need to get some new uh, dry erase markers, but it's color-coded. It's got some comedy in it. It has the names of people that we kind of generally can figure out who's who. It makes sense to me. Okay, why, why are we shaking the camera a little bit? Oh my god. <laughs> We're here with the main event. We've got the... NXT UK Championship on the line. Rampage Brown against Ilya Dragunov. These two have had a bit of an on and off sort of situation going on for a while. I think it goes at least all the way back to like August or July this past summer at least. So at least they're trying to wrap this one up before the end of the year. That's nice to see. See, we're getting some stuff wrapped up before the end of the year. Thank you, NXT UK. I appreciate y'all. An excellent question is going to be who's going to be the one to beat Ilya. I can't think of anybody offhand, but I mean, like, Ilya Dragunov has had one heck of a 2021. Truly one of the MVPs of just people that we've gotten the pleasure of watching on these reaction videos. I'm just kind of convinced that if Ilya can beat Walter, he can beat anybody at this point. <laughs> I'm kind of just like, that's where my brain's at right now, because I can't think of anybody who's going to beat this dude now. The title just works so well with Ilya, too. It's a beautiful championship, I'm not going to lie. This has the potential to be quite a good match, although, how long do we have left? Oh, we've only got ten minutes left in the episode? Okay! I, I think the depth of field was a bit of a struggle right there on the title when they were holding it up, because we couldn't see the title, like, just in general. Like, at least when they were zooming in on it. But here we go. The bell has rung. Let's see what happens here. Okay, we're off to a pretty even start so far. Looks like Ilya's in control here for the time being. But Ilya, he just, he, he's super determined. So he's just like, I'm not going to let go for any me by any means necessary. It also warms my heart just hearing how behind the crowd is with Ilya Dragunov. He's, he's wonderful. I will say this, like across all four of the shows on WWE, at least we've got like good champions for all of them. Or at least I feel like we do anyway. This, that statement could possibly not age well, but here we are. <laughs> I feel like there should have been a little bit more of a build-up for this match, even though it's like, okay, we need to wrap up some things before the end of the year. Like, I get that. But it's like, I wish they would have just let it kind of marinate a little bit, you know? Have Ilya go through a couple more people. and Because I, I was like sitting here thinking, what if Rampage Brown's the one to like and Ilya's title reign. I love how even though it looked like Ilya was just out right there for like a split second, like just, you know, because he got tossed around and stuff, he still managed to get like a swift kick in, and I appreciate that determination. It's the little things that add up. This man ain't letting go. This man ain't letting go at all. Neither of them are letting go. I think stunned is an understatement. I think this dude might be out or close to being out. But it's like really interesting the dynamic we got going on here because it's like weren't we cheering for Rampage Brown for a little bit and now it's like they're booing him. Wait, the match ended! Oh... Okay then, maybe this is how they keep the door open for Rampage Brown to go for Ilya again, you know? Okay, thank you for giving us the circle and the slowdown and the replay. At least that little detail helps us connect the dots a little bit at home, but it felt so abrupt. Yeah, hopefully he's okay. Well, despite the anticlimactic ending, I thought it was a serviceable match. I feel like they could just be like pushing this match off a little bit longer, perhaps. I would give it a few more months and... Rampage Brown could very well be the dude to take it off of Ilya, possibly. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how this whole situation pans out. But again, I hate the anticlimactic endings, but we hope that everyone's doing okay. And I think that's what should matter, right? Because again, wrestlers are human beings first. And we're just here to make sure that, you know, just to support them and to make sure that everyone's a okay Right, right. Safety first, kids. Safety and health is always first in our household. All right. So overall, I thought this was an okay episode of NXT UK. And it's kind of in the middle of the road for me this week. I thought that the opening match had a lot of energy. I thought it was just the right length. And 
it was probably my favorite match of the night of the three matches that we saw. The main event, again, I feel like they're going to let this breathe out a little bit and then revisit this at a later point. That's kind of just my thinking, at least, anyway. Hopefully everyone's okay, uh, but... I, in general, you know, it was a middle-of-the-road match. We're going to see what happens moving forward. And this one was one of our shorter episodes that we've watched recently, anyway. This one was at 50 minutes on uh, Peacock. And of that 50 minutes, we got... And about 25 out of the 50 minutes, roughly, were in-ring action and stuff like that. So it went by pretty quickly, which is, you know, always a good thing. I'm interested to see where next episode is going to go because we have another title match on our hands as well. So let's see what happens at the final NXT UK reaction of 2021 as we head into the December 9th edition of this show. So again, thank you all so much for tuning in. Leave a like, leave a comment, make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button so you get notifications around here, and check out all the links down below to all my social media. So on that note, thank you all so much for tuning in, and I will see you all around later. Bye everyone. <music>